What's going on people? In this episode, we're gonna be making a metal tone in Amplitude 5. I'm Jorge Lanza Sing now. We break it down, baby. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for being here. A new member, as usual, like, subscribe, and do all those cool little things that we like to do on YouTube so that you and I can stay in touch with each other. Anyway, my guitar of choice today is my PRS SE2408. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna choose a nice amp that we like. I think today for me, it's gonna be a Powerball. Angle Powerball, that is. I think it's just my favorite high gain amp at the moment. Okay, the first thing that we need to address is that usually amplitude five, right here in this output section all the way in the bottom, tends to sound very bad if it clips. <laughs> so whenever you see a red light here, usually you're gonna get a sound like that we don't want in our tone. So I'm gonna start by just dropping the output, maybe like, 8 dBs. Oh, why 8 dBs, Jorge? Well, I kind of, I've done tones like this in the past, and I know that that's kind of like the headroom that I need. Okay, so the first thing that I can hear in this tone right out of the bat is that it doesn't have enough mid-range. Sounds like a little bit of like a smiley face curve, and that makes me that I don't hear the chord as much as I would like to. So let's just start addressing that, right? I think right now the setting is on this mid-open. So let's try to bump it all the way up just to see what it does. And sometimes, let's say if you were like cranking your headphones and you were listening like super loud, sometimes without that much mid-range, it might sound okay. But you have to remember that this tone is going to be used most likely in the context of a song. So in a song, you kind of need that from a guitar. That's the main role of the guitar, right? That we can hear the harmony of the chord progression and kind of stuff like that. So that's what I'm looking for. Let's try the other setting, which is the focus mid. That, that sounds to me like the mid-range is a little bit higher. Let's hear it again. I think so far that's my favorite. So we will be using the focus mid-range, right? So now that we have a tone that's good, let's start addressing the studio, okay? So we're gonna go here. And as you can tell, this is like a stage. And that's okay, it sounds cool. So let's hear a couple different rooms and see what happens. Okay, let's see where we are. We are yeah, right here in the hall. So you hear how the bottom end changes a lot? Listen. Mostly the character of the bottom end is not the same. I honestly like large studio. But that hole sounds pretty good too. So be my guest and choose the one that you like. Now, let's just go in depth and solo the room and let's hear the difference in the microphones, okay? I feel like that T12 condenser picks up a lot of more bottom end. And honestly, I'm just showing you this. I already kind of know what's going to happen because I use this pretty often. And the C12s are usually my choice because they add a little bit of bottom end to the room, but not in like an annoying way. And I really like it. So if you like it, use it. Okay, now, if you can tell, we have 87 in one speaker and 57 in the other, right? What happens if I take that 57 away? Other than the volume drop that we hear, right? So I would say that that microphone is bringing the bite to the sound. And maybe we can lose a little bit more of this. Now let's hear the 87. It's like very strong, very weighty. Let's hear the difference.
So as you can tell, one microphone has the bottom and the other one has the top. And I think this is a really nice combination of microphones. I know a lot of people tend to use like a ribbon maybe in a 57, but I feel like the ribbon for a metal tone, it's a little bit too dark. But maybe you're doing a little bit less modern than what I'm trying to go for right now. So maybe that would be a good microphone for you. That's what you need to think, be thinking about. How like bright, how dark, how modern, how vintage. I want my tone to be. And that's how you've got to make all the decisions that you're making. But I think I'm very interested today in that you hear the differences that little components do. Because we tend to just try to like go into the presets or just like watch a guy that's giving us a tone. Give him in a fish and he'll eat that one day. Teach him how to fish and he'll eat forever. So there you go. Go fish. <laughs> I feel this combination is going to be really good for us. So we're going to stay there for now. Now, what I hear is that we could maybe have a little bit of a gate in the beginning of the amp. Because as you can tell, there's a little bit of a noise. Like, right? And nobody wants to have that in their tone. Plus, the gate also is going to give us a little bit more of a tighter sound. I'm going to start by turning the threshold up until I don't hear the noise of the amp anymore. And I'm going to lower the release so that it closes almost immediately. It's still a little bit slow, but whatever, that's fine. The next thing that I like to do is like I like to add a compressor. And in this case, I like this Fender compressor because it's super easy to use and you can really hear what it's doing very quickly. I'm going to use it in the low setting. And then maybe we can check the higher ones so we can understand what it's doing. Okay, in low. It does a pretty nice squash where I can hear a lot more of the detail of what's happening like with the pick and that kind of stuff. And then in the top, I'm, it's not getting super aggressive, especially when I hit the palm muting. So that's pretty good. Let's try to hear the different settings now, okay? Let's start with low. Now let's go all the way to the highest. I mean, this kind of tone actually benefits from it. It's just in my case, I feel like I lose a little bit of the responsiveness that I was getting and I, all the expressiveness that I was getting. So let's just split the difference and let's just go to medium and see what's up there. I mean, that sounds pretty good already, right? But let's take it a step further and let's add a little bit of an overdrive. Let's hear this mud honey, which is usually my preference. Uh, not too much gain. Let's see what happens. And so, you know, if I take it on and off, like you will hear, oh, we're losing a lot of bottom end and the bottom end is exciting. And it is, especially if you're practicing in your room and you're by yourself and you just want to hear those chuck like. But in the context of a mix or in a song, that just comes across as like lack of control. Because there's going to be moments that you're not going to be chugging so hard, but you're going to get that huge and, and the bottom end is just going to get too loud. You know what I'm trying to say? And with this overdrive, what I'm hearing is that the sound got tighter and I can hear every single note in my chord. And not only that, it's just, it, it's like I said, it just gets a lot tighter. You know what I'm trying to say? You can hear the chord better. You can hear everything way 
way better. So using an overdrive, it's a great decision. I think in this case, this mud honey, which is sort of like a clon, I think I'm gonna go for it. Let's hear what else do we need here. Let's see what happens if we add a little bit of treble. I think it sounds pretty nice. Wow, it almost sounds good when you like turn it all the way up. I think like especially because when you have like a super high gain amp like you like you saw in this one, the bottom end is super strong. And when you put that travels all the way up, it's like it just like does a little bit of like a tilt where the bottom end goes a little bit lower than it was and the top end goes a little bit higher. And it's like, like a super high frequency. I think it's more like around 3K, which in reality is still mid-range. <laughs> but let's just not go all the way up. Let's keep it at like, it. let's say at 7. Let's do 6. Let's see what happens. You know what I mean? Like we already have a really, really, really polished tone. It took us like, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And, and I think this is something very useful. I mean, it sounds gnarly. But if you were to play something like more extreme, like Emperor or something like that. And so with that, let's just hear what's the final result. And if you need more bottom end, switch your pickup to the neck. And let's see what happens. So as you can tell, we have a great tone. You have a little bit of versatility with your guitar by just switching pickups. If you need more bottom end, you go to your neck. If you need more bite, you go to your bridge as you probably would anyway. And if you need more, more, more bottom end, you need a bass player to play with you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before I keep talking more, remember, like, if you like this video, definitely subscribe, stay warm, stay safe, go to the comment section down below and let me know what you think. Other than that, I'm out, my friend.